Hi, Caleb with Brownhouse here. And in today's From the Vault, we're gonna be covering the much requested gray rifle that you guys have been seeing in a lot of videos and on my social media. And this is, uh, how do I put this? This is, this is my latest new hotness. This is, the, this is the one I've been using the most lately. I know we've done one on my personal AR in the past and uh, I'm not gonna say that this one takes its place, but uh, like I said, this is, this is the new hotness. All right, now I'm gonna go, go over it just kinda part by part, piece by piece, give you some reasoning and whatnot, and uh, we'll do it from tip to butt. So let's get started. So first thing, as you can see on the end here, we have the Surefire Warden, and that is mounted, let me just pull it off real quick here. I know my gun's absolutely disgusting, uh, but that's okay. I uh, Proof that I use my guns, I guess? I don't, I don't know. But anyways, um, so we have a Surefire muzzle brake here, and I usually hate muzzle brakes on shorter barreled firearms um, for obvious reasons, but I went with a muzzle brake on this one because I'm only ever gonna be shooting it with the warden on or with a suppressor on, so it's no big deal that there's a muzzle brake there. Plus I get a lot of the benefits with a, uh, of having a muzzle brake and uh, not having to worry about the concussion since I use some kind of device over said muzzle brake. And yes, you still get benefits of a muzzle brake even if you do uh, use some kind of device over the top of it. So the muzzle brake itself is pinned to the barrel. I'll go over why in just a moment here, but um, in order to get well, I guess we'll just cover it now. <laughs> in order to get to the, you know, 16 inch length, because I didn't want to, I didn't feel like paying the government uh, $200 just to have a, uh, have a gun. So what I did was actually pinned it so that the barrel length is now 16 inches, whereas the actual, you know, barrel length from, you know, chamber to thread is 13.7. Uh, 13.7 has quickly become my favorite barrel length. So pin this brake on there. I had to end up using a bit of a spacer here to get just to legal length because you know threaded down on the barrel uh, didn't quite get me there. But it is pinned and welded. Um, believe it or not, you know as much gunsmithing that I do, I don't weld. So um, I had my the man called Yeti weld this thing for me. If you know, you know. If not, uh, no big deal. But you guys know. All right, so the barrel itself is a Sons of Liberty barrel. Uh, Sons of Liberty 13.7. Uh, gas block is again a Sons of Liberty uh, gas block and gas tube. And I pinned, it, it is a set screw type gas block, but I pinned it to the barrel uh, just to make it bomb proof there. And let's, uh, from there, let's, let's talk about the handguard. If I can, there we go. All right, so the handguard is a Midwest Industries, and it is their, whatever lightweight variant they have, it's their, it doesn't have a full pick rail on top. It's actually a little bit of pick rail past the receiver, and then pick rail at the front for a front sight. And they also use a titanium barrel nut, so this handguard itself is super lightweight, which I kinda wanted to keep weight down where I could since I'm using something on the front. I didn't wanna make the gun more front heavy than it needed to be, because the Surefire Warden uh, does add a bit of weight to the gun. So, uh, front sight is a Knight's Armament front sight. Uh, we'll talk about that here. And then Slate Black Industries makes my rail panels. So these are uh, really good, affordable M-Lock rail panels. They, they feel really good on the hand. Uh, the front hand stop up here is a J-Mac Custom. And I'll kind of grip the rifle in a bit here. Um, and show you kind of how I hold it so you can see why I have these different things on here. Uh, the forward grip is a Bravo company. And then the sling attachment here. I didn't do QDs on this one. I wanted to go for something a little bit more bomb proof. So the sling is, you know, hard ran into the gun itself, no QDs. Uh, this is a Magpul M lock sling attachment. And then going on from there here, let me lift it up so I can see what I'm talking about. All right, so I think that pretty much covers everything handguard and up. Yeah, it does. All right, so let's just jump back to the receiver set real quick here. Upper and lower receiver, 
uh, both Brownells brand because Brownells mil spec stuff is awesome. Uh, so that's why I'm running here. And uh, let's jump on to the ejection port cover or dust cover. So that's a V7 lightweight ejection port cover. Um, not that I'm trying to save a ton of weight on the ejection port cover. I just thought that this one looked cool because it's different than the standard one. Uh, so that's why I went with that. And uh, PDQ lever. I milled this lower receiver. The lower receiver is a standard mill spec, like I said. So I uh, put this one in the milling machine and cut it for a PDQ lever because I am left eye dominant. I shoot rifles mostly left-handed, handguns right-handed. So uh, whenever I'm actually shooting this gun, whenever I'm doing my mag change, I can just throw the mag in. And then when I throw the mag in, I can just hit the lever, do it all in one quick motion. Uh, nice and easy there. All right, let's talk about the pivot pin and takedown pin. Those are both made by Battle Arm Development. And again, I just thought they looked cool. They're actually a little bit smaller than your standard AR-15 mil spec pins, but they're a little bit easier to manipulate. So you have a textured surface there, uh, front and rear, so they're easier to get a hold of and they are dimpled on all sides here. I'll try and show you here. So here, here, as well as the other sides are dimpled. So if for whatever reason, you know, you have one that's hard to get off, you can use some kind of tool and put it in there without having to worry about it slipping. Uh, so those are really cool pins. I like those a lot. Uh, so the crazy magazine catch button. Uh, this one here is actually just a standard mil spec button. I, I didn't do anything crazy. That It works just fine. So uh, yeah, I didn't change it. Uh, but on the opposite side, I did. So if I remember correctly, I've used a lot of different Ambi uh, mag catches or mag releases. And I've kind of settled on this one after trying all of them. I have, you know, Knight's Armament. I have this one. Uh, I have you know a few other brands, but this one here is the Troy Industries, and I keep coming back to it just because I think for like the length of I don't know if you guys will be able to see. Yeah, here we go. Like the the length of my finger works perfect for this one. Uh, a lot of the other ones I try kind of either put it too far back or they come too far forward, which is really awkward. But this one here is just falls natural and it's easy to use. Um, so that is the mag catch, mag release button type setup there. So let's keep working here. All right, I'm gonna go on the inside of the gun last, so we'll cover that stuff a little bit later. Um, the actual selector lever, again, battle arms development. So I, as you guys know, uh, probably with the Ambi battle arms development selectors, you can change the way the actual selector fits on these things. So. I have, because I shoot mainly left-handed with this gun, I put the full size lever on the right-hand side, which is a little opposite of how most of you guys are gonna do it. And then I put the scalloped lever, let me manipulate this here, on the left-hand side so that when I rotate the selector lever, it tucks underneath my trigger finger and I don't have this huge bump pushing my trigger finger out awkwardly. Uh, so that's why I put the scallop on the left-hand side. And if you're gonna use an ambi selector, using one with a scallop, whether it be left or right-handed, is awesome. Makes a huge difference in uh, long-term shooting comfort. All right, let's uh, drop down to our grip here. Bravo Company grip. It's just, I'm not saying this is the best grip, but this one, I put this on pretty much all my ARs because it's awesome. It just, it, it fits well. And the trigger. The trigger is the at the time of this video, new. Uh, it's the Geisley SSA E X Lightning Bow, their new Lightning Bow trigger. Uh, so there are wider surfaces on this trigger, um, and I'll kind of show you whenever I break it open and, and dive inside. But there's a wider face on the trigger as well. It's just uh, overall, I mean, it's a it's a Geisley trigger, guys. It's awesome. I don't need to. I mean, what what are we even doing here talking about it? Geisley triggers are great. That's the new Geisley trigger, enough said.
All right, now let's talk about the forward assist. The only forward assist on the market worth having is the forward control designs. And uh, this is the dimpled variant because everybody knows dimples, dimples are cuter. Um, fight me on it. All right, let's, uh, oh, because uh, I had to have something Knight's Armament on the gun, I guess. I guess that's my reasoning. Um, we went with the Knight's Armament Trigger Guard. Just because we can. All right. That's, uh, that's all the reasoning you're going to get on that one, because that's all I got. All right. Let's jump up to Rear Sight. Rear Sight is a arms. Kind of an old school sight, but one that I really like. No, it's not touching the optic. I know it's really close, but it's there's a there's there's a gap there, so we're good. All right, and uh, let's talk about the actual optic itself. So the mount is the Reptilia mount. Uh, it is their AUG mount, if I remember correctly. All right, excuse me, AUS, the OS mount. Uh, so the Reptilia OS mount. Um, been using it for a while. Super awesome mount. No, it's not a QD. Um, and there's a whole another video on why. So I'm not even going to get into it here. And then the optic is the Brownells MPO. This is the 1 to 8 on this one here. Uh, we also make it in a 1 to 6 with the donut reticle. But I wanted something that has uh, you know, bullet drop compensation and stuff like that. So uh, I'm gonna, I shoot a little bit further with this gun sometimes. So this was the one that suited me best. And this optic is awesome. And let's see here. Where are we? I think we covered everything outside the gun on the upper receiver. So now we can jump back to the stock area. All right, so on the actual end plate and castle nut, this is the uh, PWS ratchet system. And it was something that uh, was recommended trying. Some, somebody said, hey, you should try this. I said, okay, cool. And uh, I put it on here. I tried it. And I get it's it's cool for guys who maybe want to take their castle nut on and off a lot. Um, I'm not one of those guys. I'd kind of leave it on here. And I'm also part of the, you know, you got to stake your castle nut club. But with this one, because it's ratcheting and it actually has some positive retention there, you don't have to stake it. So I haven't staked this one, and it's held really well. So all in all, I think it's a good setup. I've had no reason to take it off. So, uh, yeah, if you're in the market or have been thinking about one. My experience with them has been really positive. All right, uh, buffer tube or receiver extension for the technical term guys out there. I don't know if this one's actually marked. Let me see here. It is, yes. This is the Geisley receiver extension. And, you know, aside from being, you know, Geisley quality, um, the other reason I got it was because it had this cool gray color to it compared to other receiver extensions. And I was like, that's the one I need. So yeah, that cool gray color is why I chose this one. Sometimes it is about the aesthetics. As long as you know the parts quality, you can do whatever you want with the aesthetics. So there's my reasoning there. And now let's get on to the stock. So one of my favorite stocks I've ever used that just fits me really, really well is the B5 systems. Now, I like having the wide cheek piece just for that extra cheek weld on here, but I'm not really super crazy about having storage compartments in them. So I got the one that has the wide cheek piece, but no storage compartments, because uh, that's how I roll. So that's the stock. And like I said before, it has QD slots on it, but I'm running hardwired in here. Um, and yes, I do run the sling through the opposite side so that it comes around. Again, there's a whole nother video on why I do that as well. All right, speaking of which, let's talk about the sling. This is the Spiritus Systems, um, one they did with uh, Sierra Tech. And it's, it's, uh, it's an awesome sling. I've, it, it adjusts really well. It has plastic... Uh, Plastic keepers on the back here, which there's a reason for that. And there's a, again, there's a whole nother video on that. So we're not going to get into it here. Uh, really positive, good, you know, metal actual adjustment device here. It adjusts 
easy when you want it to, and uh, it doesn't slip whenever you don't want it to. So what more can you ask for in a sling? All right, so we've covered everything on the outside except the paint. Let's talk about the paint because you can't, uh, you can't buy it like this, guys. All right, so this here is the Brownells Alumahide 2 in wolf gray. So what I did, I took the parts I was gonna paint. Yes, I completely dis I disassemble every little piece of a gun whenever I paint it. It's just how I do it. Uh, there's reasons to that. And what I did, I took all the, all the every little piece off. The parts I wanted to paint, I blasted with uh, aluminum oxide. And then I painted them with Brown Nose Aluminum High 2. And I speed cured them in an oven because Brown Nose Aluminum High 2 is an air cure. But as long as you're dealing with metal parts, you can speed cure it in an oven. So that's what I did. Really strong, durable finish. I've used the heck out of this gun. Um, I've dropped it on the ground a lot doing, you know, like crazy stuff. And uh, I say dropped it on the ground a lot. I was like on the ground with it. I wasn't just like dropping my gun. You, you guys get it. Anyways, uh, and the paints held up really well. So it's a super durable finish, but we already knew that because this brown nose aluminum high too. So, yeah. Uh, and I guess a half, half submerged inside the gun part, we can call it. Can we call it that? We'll call it that. Uh, it's going to be the charging handle. So this is the Radiant Raptor SD because that's supposed to help with gases that blow back uh, if you're using a suppressor. And since we can on this gun, we uh, went with the SD with the gray levers on it just kind of match the theme of everything here and as you can probably see now I'm on the opposite side of the gun so I cannot you were like man what's up with that bolt carrier group let me tell you about this bolt carrier group so this is a uh, F1 firearms bolt carrier group and it is PVD coated in a gold finish I think this is a rose gold if I remember correctly uh, but I've been using the heck out of this gun. That finish on there is super easy to clean. Uh, the bolt carrier group itself is made out of all the right materials. It is a really, really good quality bolt carrier group. Everything's properly staked. Um, and yeah, I mean, what? I'm, it's made out of the right stuff and everything on it's done properly. Um, magnetic particle inspected, all that good stuff. So uh, that's why I'm running that bolt carrier group. I got a buddy over at F1 Firearms. And uh, he was like, hey, you need to try this. I'm going to send you one in the spirit of matesmanship. And I was like, if you send it, I will try it, but no promises. And I tried it, and it's awesome. So um, no, uh, F1 didn't pay me to say that. So, yeah, it's just a good bolt carrier group. All right, let's, uh, let's, let's dive a little bit deeper inside the gun here. We're almost, we're almost finished, guys. All right. I talked about how easy that pin was to grab if you're not sitting at a weird angle so cameras can see it. All right, there we go. All right, so let me, uh, let me do a little more maneuvering here. As I said, my gun's absolutely filthy. So uh, there's that Geisley trigger there. And I don't know if you can see this selector here. This is a battle arm development, and it looks like the middle of it is titanium nitride coated I haven't seen any others like that if you guys know anything about that let me know in the comments down below because I'm not 100% on like it was that a limited run or whatever they did I don't know uh, so yeah if you got more info on that I'd, I'd love to hear about it all right and as you can see that Geisley uh, lightning bow trigger there and uh, I think I pretty much said a lot about that and I don't think we really need to take out the... We'll take out the bulk here group. As I said before, this thing's absolutely filthy. All right, the buffer and spring. One of my favorites here. I'll pull it out. All right, we're running a Geisley Super 42. And we're just running a standard H1 buffer in here. Uh, not the H2 that I'm running in my other gun. Because this one is... Shoots great with this setup, and uh, I get a perfect uh, brass ejection pattern and all that good stuff. So that's why we run that. Lubricant. The lubricant we use on this gun 
What lubricant am I using on this gun? There's two main lubricants that I use. I use the uh, Sons of Liberty, and then I also use RAN COP. I uh, don't mix them together, despite what people may say. But uh, yeah, I use one of those two lubricants, and uh, both of them work really well. Those are probably the best two on the market, in my opinion. And uh, that pretty much covers it. If I missed anything, and you guys are like, hey, what the heck is that? Um, post it in the comments down below, and if I catch it, I'll pin it so that other people don't blow me up with the same exact question a billion times. So, uh, yeah, that's it. That's This is the new hotness, guys. Uh, so, thanks for watching, and make sure you hit that like and subscribe button. We'll see you next time when we bring you another gun from the vault.